ladies and gents, Jonah Faulkner here for you today. This is Jonah Faulkner on finance. Today, we will be giving you a brief overview of Medicare. Hopefully, giving you a better understanding of how to approach it. This is about Medicare, the government-funded health insurance program for people 65 plus and some younger people with disabilities in the U.S not Medicare, the Australian government funded health insurance by the same name. Okay, what is Medicare? There are four parts to Medicare. Medicare Part A, basically it's hospital insurance. Part B, basically medical. Part C is a cover all term for a substitute for Medicare called Medicare Advantage, where you give it away to a private company. And part D is prescription drug coverage. So Medicare doesn't actually cover prescription drugs, so it is completely separate. And those are private companies contracted um, by the government to provide that. Okay, dokie. All right, now we can look at something besides just my title screen. Just kidding. So I said it is basically hospital insurance, basically medical insurance and drug coverage. As you can see here, that is what, um, what is covered. If we just fly through it very briefly, hospital insurance is inpatient care in hospitals, skilled nursing facility care, hospice care, home health care. Uh, if we go, we will go deeper into it later on, but just very briefly, that's what's covered. Part B, medical. Uh, covers services from doctors and other healthcare providers, outpatient care, home health care, durable medical equipment like wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds, and other equipment, uh, oxygen masks, CPAP machine, things like that. Many preventative services like screening shots or vaccines and yearly wellness visits. We will also go over what those are. Part D is a prescription drug coverage. So as I said before, Medicare doesn't actually uh, cover that and you have to rely on a private company, but those private companies are contracted uh, through Medicare. So they have to cover something in each therapeutic class of drugs. So you aren't necessarily gonna get the drug that you are already uh, accustomed to. You might get what is on their formulary and therefore we need to know what exactly those things are. And anyway, so continuing. All right. Okie dokie. So if we just went over A and B, and D, sort of, we are now talking about A and B, and D, sort of, as compared with C, which, as I said, is giving your Medicare away basically to a private company, and they're taking it off of Medicare's hands. What's going on in the background is your... Premiums or taxes that you've paid over your life for Medicare are being transferred on your behalf to this private company. So in my county, at least, most Medicare Advantage plans are zero cost. Many of them refund you a certain amount of your Part B premium per month. And the reason that they can do all of that is the government is literally paying uh, them to take you off of their hands. So if we just go through this real quick, Original Medicare is A and B, hospital and medical. You can join a separate Medicare prescription drug plan, Part D. Not only can you, you more than likely should. If you have original Medicare, we'll, we'll get into all this. You could use any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare, which is sweet. That's one of the largest networks in the country. I believe 60 million or so um, providers, something ridiculous except Medicare, something way, way, way high up there, right alongside other top, top, top health insurers like Blue Cross or United Healthcare or, or whatever. Um, to help pay your out-of-pocket costs in original Medicare, like your 20% coinsurance, they're referring to how much you owe under Part B after you satisfied your Part B deductible. Uh, you can also shop for and buy supplemental coverage. So they're saying that the costs that are left over by Medicare, you can pay additional for additional coverage to pick those up. And then conversely, on the other side, we'll get to it. Actually, we can get to it right now. 
Uh, so supplemental coverage is what I was referring to. You can add additional uh, coverage for additional money, and it is inserting ensuring the excess of what Medicare is leaving off. As we see here, Medicare Advantage, as I referred to earlier, is not similar. It is similar in that it is providing you health care and it may be meeting your health care needs, but it is extremely dissimilar in that you are no longer using Medicare. You are using your insurer's network. You are playing by their rules and the government's telling you have the government's telling them they have to do this and they have to do that meaning they have to pay at least what Medicare would have paid, essentially. They can't, you know, be giving you a, a raw deal. Um, but comparatively, you're losing, compared with original Medicare and a supplement, compared with Medicare Advantage, you are losing a degree of freedom by trusting this private insurer, you know, with network decisions and so forth. If you just stick with original Medicare, you have less... Um, you have less in between you and, and, and getting your care, if that makes sense. Okie dokie. Medicare Advantage is a Medicare approved plan from a private company. I already said all that. These bundled plans, oh, I didn't, didn't say that. So Medicare Advantage plans are normally bundled with prescription drug uh, coverage. So in the industry, we call them Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans, um, which to you, just means that you, you this is gonna function like your insurance does now. So if you have major medical insurance now, your drugs are included, hospitals included, doctor's visits included, it's all in one package. That's basically what getting my A and B and D coverage wrapped up in a Medicare Advantage plan, which would be Part C. So, uh, and then I talked about the lack of freedom. So in most cases, you can only use doctors who are in the plans network. That's exactly what I meant um, with 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 the uh, original Medicare only or uh, original Medicare plus a supplement your network is uh, the network that the Medicare network so you don't need to worry in many cases you will need to get approval this is kind of where it uh, the freedom as I was speaking about is kind of um, taken away from you so in many cases you may need to get approval from your plan before it covers certain drugs or services so if you are receiving something that is expensive, whether that is a drug or a service, something that is going to cost the insurer some money, they hopefully won't, but more than likely there will be pre-authorizations that need to get done and hopefully they do not drag their feet and it gets done when you need it to get done. Um, but I frankly really am not um, rushing to put people in the position where the insurers have so much say over what's covered and what's not covered. If we let Medicare make the decision, uh, the supplements can't say no. If Medicare covers it, they have to cover it. So they're kind of, you know, up the creek, if you will. But Medicare Advantage, there's a HHS report that I can, uh, from, from the Inspector General, I can, I can link that's, um, just shows that the rate of um, denial for claims is, is, is unreasonably high. Um, and I, as an insider, suspect that that is likely due to money. But nonetheless, plans may have a lower out-of-pocket cost than original Medicare. So of the ways that we can get you to give up some freedom, the best way is to lure you in. So what can we lure you in with? We can lure you in with a $0 premium. That's awesome. We can lure you in with a uh, Part B rebate. So maybe our Part B is 100 bucks, and they're going to rebate us 100 bucks. So our cost to enroll is nothing, and our cost for Medicare is nothing. Sweet. So beyond that, you also typically get, um, depending on whether it's an HMO or a PPL, you know, the doctors might be 10 bucks to go see, or they might be 25 bucks to go see, or they might be 40 bucks to go see. But ultimately, that is less than what your cost share would be on original Medicare almost all of the time, especially when it comes to hospitals. So we'll get into how exactly Part A works, but it's a little bit funky. And basically, you have, in some instances, on a Medicare Advantage, you're going to end up paying more. On most 
in most instances, you end up paying less. The, the big kicker is that you'll, you just lose freedom in, you have to go by the network, and there might be pre-authorizations or step limits or other hoops that you have to jump through, which may or may not be worth your time. Okay, so we actually have a bit more after this. So there's, there's of, the good, of the goodies that they entice you with, uh, vision is cool, but vision insurance is frankly very cheap, maybe 10 bucks a month. Hearing, same thing, very cheap, maybe 10 bucks a month. Even cheaper, honestly, probably closer to five. Uh, dental can be on the more expensive end, but generally I don't see a point in doing plans that are more than 10 or so dollars. Uh, so that's of value for sure, um, but I would encourage you not to make decisions on your healthcare based on um, how much over-the-counter benefit you will be receiving or whether you're going to get um, frames coverage or whether you'll get um, a hearing aid allotment or whether you'll get a dental allotment. Like if you're expecting that you need new hearing aids, maybe we can finagle the system or uh, dental, you, you're going to need a really expensive dental procedure, maybe we can finagle the system. but. I would not generally make uh, decisions with regard to Medicare seeking those ancillary benefits. I would focus on um, the big things, the big recurring costs, as well as things like hospital, ambulance, air ambulance, chemotherapy, the big, big, the big, the big ones is what we want to focus on, not these little, I don't want to call them gimmicks, but they're, they're, they're things that are ultimately not very expensive to go buy elsewhere. Okay, so continuing onward. Okay, original Medicare versus Medicare Advantage. This is basically just gonna give you um, an overview of what I kind of just explained, which I think is good, because this is directly from Medicare and you, which you may or may not have been mailed um, by the government, you may have thought it was some sort of, um, you know, spam or marketing material or something, but uh, nonetheless, if you have in fact opened it, I doubt that you have made it through very far. It is not exactly um, entertaining um, reading material, as we will see here. Um, I'm going to read it here for you today. All right, so original Medicare. Your doctor and hospital choice, you can use any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare anywhere in the US. So it, that's what I explained to you earlier. In most cases, you do not need a referral to see a specialist. I would say in almost all cases, rather than most. Um, nonetheless, Medicare Advantage. In many cases, you can only use doctors or other providers who are in the plans networks. Or the, in the plans network and service area uh, for non-emergency care. Meaning, if you're outside of the plan service area, so if I'm in a local health maintenance organization, local HMO, serves Florida only, and I'm visiting family in Massachusetts, and I have a stroke, and I need to be hospitalized, I'm okay, I have coverage. That is a life-threatening emergency. They are not going to expect me to get to an in-network hospital being in another state and having a life-threatening emergency they will work with me short of that uh unless you have a ppo you have no out-of-network coverage so epo no out-of-network hmo no out-of-network uh that's what i just said so some plans offer non-emergency coverage out of network but typically at a higher cost basically i said this in another video but our in-network with PPO, in, in versus out, our in-network cost sharing, if you say doctor's 10 bucks, I would say out of network, it's gonna be 20. If a hospital is $200 a day in network, out of network, it's $400 a day, just as a simple rule. So max out of pocket, in network is five grand, out of network is 10. Okie dokie, cost. So, uh, We're going to go over this several times, the cost. Uh, hopefully, by the end of it, you will have a good understanding. Cost. So, so for original Medicare, for Part B covered services, this was referenced just earlier, you usually pay 20% of the Medicare approved amount. 
after you meet your deductible, which uh, I also mentioned, the Part B deductible is very small relative to the Part A deductible. This amount is called your coinsurance. Uh, part C, your out-of-pocket costs vary. Plans may have lower or higher out-of-pocket costs for certain services. That's a succinct way of putting it. There are plans in my area for which it would cost you zero to enroll, zero to go to the doctor, zero to go to a specialist, uh, zero to go to the hospital, zero for inpatient surgery, zero for outpatient, I can go on. Uh, but it's a very small uh, network and it's, an, it's, it's a local HMO only. Um, but if I want a plan that has coverage, say a PPO, with a national carrier like United Healthcare or Aetna or Humana or something along those lines, I am not going to get coverage like that. There's no way that I'm going to get all those things for zero dollars. That is way too much money for Humana or Aetna or whatever to be on the hook for. If I have a very small network uh, of doctors that I'm paying per head, and that's how most of them are, are, are paid. When we're talking about these HMO systems, the way that the doctors are getting paid is called per capita, which just means they get a monthly stipend per enrollee. So what that's supposed to do is incentivize the doctor to provide more preventive care, to focus on disease prevention as opposed to treatment after the fact because it's more expensive. And now the, the, the burden is placed on the doctor. So they aren't getting reimbursements from the insurer. They're getting that monthly stipend. So if, 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 if the patients that they have assigned to them as their primary, if they're receiving more, more, more in services in dollars than he's receiving from that insurer, then he needs to shuffle people through the door. So some people on Medicare may have already experienced this. They may not know what exactly uh, is the cause of this. They may not have ever remembered doctors being like this in the past, but for as long as insurance has been like this, I can see there is an incentive to get people in and get people out. Uh, it, as So we, Medicare does not pay very much money when, it, when we're talking about reimbursements for things. Um, and when we're talking about Medicare Advantage, they don't, they don't, they don't pay very much either. Um, so the, 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 it's really for providers a, a volume game for most of them, um, unless they figured out some way to, um, you know, provide s several services to the same person um, if, in s perhaps different disciplines and, and you know, inflate them. kind of like a hospital, you know, like unless you can do this and this and this and this and this and this and this, billing for one Medicare, like a chiropractor, billing for one Medicare um, service likely isn't going to break even for them. Anyway, so the reason why I say all this is working doctors, can get paid several different ways. I think it's instructive to know how they get paid when we're enrolling on an HMO. So the doctor that we select is gonna get paid per month to take care of us. And that's really all that we need to know about um, that. Okie dokie. So that is all that there. Okay, continuing the cost of original Medicare for Part B covered services usually pay 20% of the Medicare approved amount. Uh, that's just fancy language for services that Medicare feels there is substantial data backing the efficacy for that are medically necessary. And their definition of medically necessary is nowhere near as arbitrary as many insurers are. So I would not... Medicare approved, pay, uh, Medicare approved amount should not engender fear in anyone. So after you meet your deductible, uh, for Part B, your deductible in 2023 is not much money at all. It's going to be, I wish I could tell you right off the bat, it's going to be 200 and, 
It's going to be on the low end of 200, which is an annual deductible, which I would die for. My health plan, that is a premium health plan, has a deductible of $5,000. And that's from someone that knows how to buy insurance. So I would kill uh, to have the Part B deductible that, that, that Medicare beneficiaries have. Anyway, not envious. I'm here to help. You pay, um, this is the same thing as, as earlier, so on, on Medicare Advantage, on Part C, your out-of-pocket costs vary wildly, um, depending on the carrier, depending on the type of plan, depending on the area of the country, as well as depending on the facility in which our services are rendered. Um, so the larger the facility, generally, the more expensive my cost share, my copay, my co-insurances are going to be. So as a rule, generally, the smaller the building that I can get a procedure in, generally, the cost is going to be lesser, uh, at least, you know, insurance-wise, copay-wise. Okay, dokie. Original Medicare. You pay a premium, a monthly payment for Part B. If you choose to join a separate Medicare drug plan, you will pay a separate premium for your Medicare drug coverage Part D. So I would tell you the um, Part B premium. However, yours can be within a range. The average that gets posted um, very well may not be what you actually pay. Um, nonetheless, it is, I believe, just under what the Part B deductible is, so like 200. High, high, I've been doing this for a few years, and I at the beginning when I was a sales agent, I could I could whip this stuff right out of a hat. But it's just something that I could very quickly look up. Like I can't tell you the um, the uh, maximum SEP IRA contribution for 2023. I mean, I can because I just looked it up, but. You know, in a week from now, I'm not going to be able to just pull that, uh, you know, out of my uh, out of my head. But anyway, if we do decide that we want a Part D drug plan, that's going to cost us extra. If we get Medicare Advantage with a prescription drug plan, at least in my area, there is no additional cost for that. So the the there are some Medicare Advantage plans that cost money to enroll. And if they have drug coverage, then that satisfies all your needs. There is your um, medical, your hospital, and your drugs all wrapped up with a bow. If we pay for Part B, so we need to pay for Part B. If we have worked for 40 quarters, so 10 years of paying Medicare tax, we have earned premium-free Part A, which is excellent because if you have to pay for Part A, it's ridiculously expensive. It's like 400 and something dollars a month. It's actually probably even more now. But anyway, so if you're getting your Part B, it's like 200 and something bucks a month. That plus your A is the ticket to entry to Part C. So provided that we've done that, you pay the monthly Part B premium and may also have to pay the plans premium. So Medicare Advantage may have a premium uh, more than likely it will not if you're in a competitive area like mine. If you're not in a competitive area, it almost certainly will have a premium uh, which you'll want to weigh against a supplement which will give you more freedom but will be less familiar to you. Medicare Advantage has one thing going for it majorly and that's it's very similar to the insurance that you're probably accustomed to. Um, each thing has its own specific copay or coinsurance, you know, it's got a deductible, it's got a maximum out of pocket. I wish Medicare worked like that. Medicare does, it sort of works like that, but it's 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 way more complicated for no reason. Anyway, we're gonna get into all this. We're not gonna leave you uh, more confused than you came in, hopefully. Um, most plans include Medicare prescription drug coverage. Some plans may have a $0 premium and may help pay all or part of your Part B premium. That is what I was referring to earlier about the rebate. Um, I would, it's an, it's, it's an unfortunate position to be in when, you, when, when, that, when the rebate is what entices you to select one plan over the other, but times are tough and you know getting 1200 bucks a month, uh, ad additional to, or not 1200 bucks a month, sorry, 1200, 100 bucks a month, 1200 a year, additional to a social security 
might be a, a really big difference to um, someone. So I'm not knocking it. All right, original Medicare. There is no yearly limit on what you have to pay out of pocket. That is a big deal. So unlike your private plan that you're on now, or maybe you're not on it now, but way back when, when you had <laughs> private insurance, there was a deductible. Maybe there wasn't. There was a maximum out of pocket. There definitely was, or it wasn't major medical. It had co-pays, it had co-insurance and so forth. Anyway, this is to say, original Medicare does not have a, a, a limit, an annual limit, an annual out-of-pocket limit. So if we get cancer and we go through chemotherapy or cancer treatment, maybe you're not a fan of chemotherapy, some other cancer treatment, if we end up going through the traditional means of treatment, which is very generally chemotherapy, we are going to owe 20% generally. Why? Well, it's billed under Part B. Chemotherapy, ther chemotherapy is billed under Part B, and that's the way that billing under B um, works. So you are responsible for 20%, and then the Medicare would be responsible for that remaining 80. So if we do some quick maths, I have no idea if you know what uh, chemotherapy costs, but for me to you, it is ridiculously expensive and it will wipe out a six-figure fortune very quickly uh, if you don't have liability caps, if you don't have an annual maximum liability cap. So 20% of a big number is still a big number. So if we have 200,000 in medical bills as a result of doing 50 weeks of chemotherapy at four grand a week, um, maybe 40 grand won't sink your boat, but for a lot of people, that is well more than their retirement nest egg can sustain uh, from in one in one go as a, as a, as a, As a, as a life or death thing, like what else are you gonna do? Like throw it on a credit card at 25% at, at interest? No, you're gonna take the money that just you, you spent your whole life working for and you're gonna use it for continuing on with your life uh, in as best health as you can. So that's that's why it's important to buy Medicare. If you, if you have just original Medicare or um, if you have A and B, or just A, or just B, you have unlimited liability. If we have A and B, we have our liability capped somewhat. If we add the supplement, depending on which one, we'll go into it later on. If we add the supplement, we then cap our liability further, um, potentially to to far less than you know you would pay on a on a comparatively priced um, Medicare Advantage. Okay, plan uh, Medicare Advantage plans have a yearly limit on what you pay out of pocket for services. Medicare Part A and Part B cover that the my cadence sounded wrong. Plans have a yearly limit on what you pay out of pocket for services. Medicare Part A and Part B cover. Got it. Once you reach your plan's limit, you'll pay nothing for services Part A and Part B cover for the rest of the year. So that is exactly how your plan works now. If you have a major medical plan, which is what I was referring to earlier in that it works very similar. Original Medicare doesn't work so similarly. So if you, if you really like how your current plan functions, Medicare Advantage is very, 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 very similar. So exactly how your plan would work. If I hit the maximum out of pocket, you know, I've met my I've met my deductible. I've paid my coinsurance or copays beyond that, and now I have met my maximum amount of pocket. All the services that I receive from that point onward for the rest of the year are uh, paid for one hundred percent by the insurer. So this is what they're uh, referring to there. It's the same mechanism. Oh, okay, okay. Back to original Medicare. You can get Medigap to help pay your remaining out of pocket costs, like your twenty percent coinsurance. Or you can use coverage from a former employer or union or Medicaid. We are going to go into that. If you have Part C, you can't buy and don't need Medigap. It's illegal for me or anyone else to sell you um, both. So if you know someone that has both, 
um, send them to me because they need to enroll from one of those and the person that did that to them should have um, a talking to, to, to put it lightly. Okie dokie. Last one on this topic. Coverage, original Medicare. Original Medicare covers most medically necessary services and supplies in hospitals, doctors, offices, and other healthcare facilities. That's what I was referring to earlier. I was saying, don't worry about um, it saying, you know, Medicare approved. You know, that's not like as scary as it sounds. They really are pretty generous with, with all that's covered. Um, original Medicare doesn't, in, doesn't cover some benefits like eye exams, most dental care, and routine exam. So the only dental care, as far as I know, that Medicare is going to cover is that as the result of some sort of accident or some sort of some sort of I'm going to say traumatic event. But that's that's how it was explained to me. Um, so I would I would the reason why people buy dental plans separately, the reason why Medicare Advantage includes dental, is as a rule, Medicare does not cover dental. If you have like some horrific accident and you knock out all your teeth, it might cover dental. But like really don't count on it. Really count on it only if like you take like a hockey puck to the mouth and lose, you know, everything. Anyway. Okie dokie. Part two. Plans must cover all medically necessary services that Original Medicare covers. That is what I was referring to earlier, that they can't give you the short end of the stick. They have to cover at least what Medicare covers. So beyond that are what they're enticing you with. So plans may also offer some extra benefits that original Medicare doesn't cover, and it says that in all bold, <laughs> like vision, hearing, and dental services, which is, we went over. Back to original Medicare. You can join a separate Medicare drug plan to get Medicare drug coverage for Part D, you have to, we well, don't have to, but it would, unless you want to pay a fee eventually, like even if you aren't on a prescription drug plan now and don't need prescription drugs, um, if you decide later on that you do need one and you do need prescription drugs, you get fined uh, retroactively um, for all the time that you should have or could have had a Part D drug plan, but didn't. We're actually going to go into that too. Uh, back to Part C. Medicare drug coverage is included in most plans. In most types of Medicare Advantage plans, you can't join a separate Medicare drug plan. You can, but it'll unenroll you from your Medicare Advantage plan. So if I have XYZ Medicare Advantage prescription drug plan, or sorry, this one doesn't have prescription drug coverage. So XYZ prescription drug plan, sorry, XYZ Medicare Advantage we're going to now enroll in PYQ prescription drug plan. As soon as we do that, as soon as that uh, enrollment becomes effective, we're gonna get kicked off of the Medicare Advantage immediately. So that's what they mean that you can't, you can't do it. You can, but you, they, they won't, it won't work. It won't, they won't, they won't, they won't act in concert. They'll cancel each other out. Like they'll literally cancel each other or one will cancel, the uh, the latter one will remain. The last one that you had applied for will remain. Okay, original Medicare. In most cases, you don't have to get a service or a supply approved ahead of time for original Medicare to cover it. So that's what's sweet. If, if we know that we're gonna need service, or maybe we don't know that we're gonna need service, we just suspect that we might, wouldn't you like to have it as quickly as possible? Why would you, why do you, why would you wanna involve all these intermediaries? Wouldn't you want as little inter intermediaries as possible? Um, if I were your doctor, I would. I would want money to come to me as quickly as possible, and as much of it, with as little uh, hands in the cookie jar, if you will. So this is, this is something that I, feel is of great value um, and I wish I didn't have to deal with a private insurance company and deal with their crazy BS about you know, getting stuff approved. I, I really, even as an insider, I really can't stand it. Um, okay, Medicare Advantage Part C. In many cases, you have to get a service or a supply approved ahead of time for the plan to cover it. Exactly what I'm talking about. If I'm like sick, my guy, that's not what I'm thinking about. And even if the doctors are doing that, 
bless their heart like that shouldn't be part of their job to to deal with insurance like this and and it's crazy to me how insurance billing is like a whole profession oh, it's a whole career like that you need specialists to interpret this stuff it's it's really it's crazy okay all right foreign travel original medicare original medicare generally doesn't cover medical care outside the u.s you may be able to buy a medicare supplement insurance policy they say you may be able to uh we're gonna get into that they're medically underwritten so unless you're healthy you can't get one in some states even if you are not healthy you still can get one uh on your birthday I think it's California and maybe like one other state that have that rule. For all others, it is generally, like my state for instance, Florida, you get a guaranteed issue right when you are turning 65. So that's what they mean by you may be able to. Okay, plan, or part C. Plans generally don't cover medical care outside the US. Some plans may offer a supplemental benefit that covers our emergency and urgently needed care uh, outside the US. Okay, so this is uh, a wrap for, no it ain't, one more thing. Of types of Medicare Advantage plans, I talked about PPO, I talked about HMO, I talked about EPO, I can go into other types. There's HMO POS, there's PFFS, there's um, MSAs, there's, um, what I wanna get into are SNPs, which stand for Special Needs Plans. So they're Medicare Advantage plans for specific populations. So we have two types, or rather we have more than two types, but we basically have two subtypes, which will further become more, but you see what I mean. Type one, I would say, is a dual eligible, meaning they have Medicare and they have Medicaid. So if they have both, they're called uh, a dual eligible enrollee and they get a Medicare, 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 Medicaid, Medicare Advantage plan. So you have the state, you know, and half the federal government, so the money feeds Florida's Medicare fund, but you have the, the state and the federal government basically paying for your care. So it's a really, 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 really sweet deal. Um, it is, I would say personally, in my experience, it is better than um, original Medicare and Medicaid. I would much, 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 much prefer my family, me, my friends to be on a Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Medicare Advantage plan, like a United Healthcare PPO. I, in fact, I think they have the only PPO in the whole nation uh, for Medicare and Medicaid, and it's 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 great. Um, anyway, here. Um, here, oh, we're in, we're in a Medigap, aren't we? We sure are. Okie dokie. So actually we were still on S and P's, which aren't here, but they are a type of part, part C Medicare Advantage plan. That's why I keep saying Medicare Advantage when it kind of sounds unnecessary for me to be saying it. Um, so we have the Medicare Medicaid, Medicare Advantage, which is for the dual enrollees, which is for the people on Medicaid and it's good stuff, right? So the other type that we have is also good stuff. It's called a uh, chronic special needs plan. So instead of needing the income uh, or the, the asset limit, you know, with Medicaid to qualify, you need a specific condition. So stuff like chronic heart failure, gets its own special plan. Diabetes gets its own special plan. COPD, they get their own special plan. So if you have some condition that's like almost that, like adjacent to that, you very likely will qualify for one of these SNP, special need plans, the chronic special need type plans. And what makes them special are, are that relative to a regular Medicare Advantage that you or I would be able to purchase. The chronic ones will have, for instance, the COPD one. Say they have inhalers galore, uh, 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 you know, lots of medicine that they need to, to, to buy. And they got oxygen tanks. That's expensive. You know, like, like the nebulizers and so forth and the inhalers, those are some of the most expensive medicines and when you need to take them regularly, it really adds up. Anyway, 
these plans, like the COPD plans, are, um, I don't want to say as a rule, but generally, they're much, 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 much better than, um, you know, your, your run-of-the-mill Medicare Advantage plan. And the reason for that is they are specifically designed to benefit these uh, populations of people. So if you don't qualify, you cannot enroll. I would say that this is like a veiled garden. If you can get an SNP, it almost certainly is worth your time, unless it's a crappy network or um, something something along those lines, something irks you about it um, for a good reason. Um, generally, they're great. Generally, I would I would push people uh, towards SNPs wherever people qualify for them. Uh, the cost sharing that you're responsible for is substantially lesser. Like it brings me great joy when I can tell someone, we're gonna save you a ton of money. Like you qualify for this. And this is a special type of plan that only a few people uh, qualify for. Anyway, that's that. That's, uh, that's S&Ps, that's uh, Medicare Advantage. Now into Medigap. What if we're on the other side? What if we have money? Uh, to plan. Medigap. If uh, you see the percentages here, what you're seeing is um, what the Medigap plan covers. So you're responsible for the rest. So if we see on this here, F and G have the most 100s. And if you see F actually has the most. The reason why I say F and G is most Medicare Advantage, most Medicare beneficiaries are eligible to enroll in Plan F. So if you're eligible for Medicare, I believe January 2020 or January, I think it was January 2020. Anyway, if you're eligible before then, you can enroll in a Plan F. If you're eligible after then, you cannot enroll in a Plan F. So Plan F is the Mac Daddy in regard to what they're paying most uh, on, like what they're covering the most. The, mo the most comprehensive of these is the F. And if you're on the other side of that window, the next is the G. Okay, Medicare supplements in most states are medically underwritten, uh, meaning if you are not healthy enough to qualify, you do not get a policy unless you have the the guaranteed issue right that I mentioned to you earlier. Um, the drug coverage. Once you have one of these uh, Medigap plans, you still don't have drug coverage. So there used to be a, a, a one called a Plan J um, that they phased out as well, kind of like they're phasing out the F that covered prescription drugs. Uh, it don't it don't exist no more. Um, here we go. Here is how Part D works, and this is basically what I explained to you earlier, but this is it in more graphic detail directly from the government. Medicare prescription drug coverage helps you pay for drugs you need. It's optional and offered to everyone with Medicare. Even if you don't take prescription drugs now, consider getting Medicare drug coverage. If you decide not to get it when you are first eligible, you and you don't have any other credible prescription drug coverage, like drug coverage from an employer union or get extra help, which is like um, Medicaid adjacent for prescription drugs. Uh, you'll likely pay a late enrollment penalty if you join a plan later. Generally, you'll pay this penalty for as long as you have Medicare drug coverage. That's That could potentially be two decades or three or four. Um, four is a little uh, optimistic, but you know what I mean. To get Medicare drug coverage, you must join a Medicare approved plan that offers drug coverage. Each plan can vary in cost and specific drugs covered. Visit medicare.gov slash plan slash compare to find and compare plans in your area. Uh, there are two ways to get Medicare drug coverage. Two, okay. You have a standalone Medicare prescription drug plan, which is what you would attach to a Medicare supplement. If we got instead a Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug, uh, 
it's all it's all included. So that's that's really our only option is is standalone drug plan or Medicare Advantage plan with drugs. There are no more supplement options um, with drugs. And to save you the time, I'm not going to go into this any longer. Okie dokie, very briefly. Eligibility for Medicare. Uh, most people are eligible for Medicare at age 65. Some young people with certain disabilities as well as people with end-stage renal disease may also be eligible. For people that are disabled, generally it is two years and a day, and then they are eligible for Medicare. Medicare beneficiaries must be citizens or permanent residents of the United States. Enrolling in Medicare. Okie dokie. So you can either get Medicare automatically or not. So some people get it automatically. Who gets it automatically? If you get Social Security, if you're taking Social Security, receiving, drawing, however you want to, however you want to put it, you are likely going to be enrolled automatically. Or the Railroad Retirement Board. So you automatically get part A and part B starting the first day of the month you turn 65. If you're under 65 and have a disability, you automatically get part A and part B after disability benefits from Social Security or certain disability benefits from the real retirement for 24 months. That is what I just said. If you have ALS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, you'll get part A and B automatically the month your Social Security benefits begin. If you automatically get Medicare, you'll get your red, white, and blue Medicare card in the mail three months before your 65th birthday or 25th month of disability benefits, and you don't need to pay a premium for Part A. Most people choose to keep Part B. If you don't want Part B, let us know before the coverage start date on your Medicare card. If you do nothing, you'll keep Part B, and you'll have to pay Part B premiums through your Social Security benefits. If you need help deciding whether you should keep Part B, see page 19. If you choose not to keep Part B but later decide you want it later, there may, there may have... You may have a delay in getting Medicare Part B coverage, and you may have to pay a late enrollment fee for as long as you have Part B. Okay, continuing with automatic. If you're close to 65 but not getting Social Security or Railroad Retirement Board benefits, you'll need to sign up for Medicare. Visit ssa.gov slash benefits slash Medicare to apply for Part A and Part B. You can also contact Social Security three months before you turn 65 to set up an appointment. I would avoid doing that in the age of COVID. It's uh, slowed down substantially. If you work for a, a railroad, contact the Railroad Retirement Board. In most cases, if you don't sign up for Part B when you're first eligible, you may have a delay in getting Medicare Part B coverage in the future, and you may have to pay a late enrollment penalty for as long as you have Part B, which is a really awful penalty it's uh it's 10 percent of your part b premium for each year that you should have had it that didn't so it could be a ton of money i've seen it be a ridiculous amount of money for people that have delayed it into their 70s um without realizing the consequence and without having credible coverage there are reasons to 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 delay part b but not everyone makes the right decision anyway if you have end-stage renal disease and you want medicare you'll need to sign up for it if you live in puerto rico and get benefits from social security or the railroad retirement board you'll automatically get part a on the first day of the month you turn 65 or after you get disability benefits for 24 months you'll need to sign up for part b okay people that um aren't enrolled automatically have specific windows in which they can do so, which are here. Initial enrollment period. You can first sign up for Part A and or Part B during the seven month period that begins three months before the month you turn 65, the month you turn 65, and three months after the month you turn 65. 
if you sign up for Part A and or Part B during the first three months of your initial enrollment period. In most cases, your coverage begins the first day of your birthday month. However, if your birthday is on the first day of the month, your coverage starts the first day of the prior month. If you sign up and are paying for Part A and or Part B the month you turn 65 or during the last three months of your initial enrollment period, the start date for your Part B coverage will be delayed. If you sign up the month you turn 65 or during the last three months of your initial enrollment period, your coverage starts the first day of the month after you sign up. You may have to listen to that again because frankly I do so have to sometimes it's 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 a convoluted mess and if you if you mess up the enrollment period especially if we're talking about a guaranteed issue you might um, I don't know what your position is you might be making this these decisions for yourself you might be helping your family but you messing up the enrollment period is one of the worst mistakes um, that I believe that you can make uh, in selecting Medicare coverage okie dokie so that is all of that, and now we're gonna go ahead more. Okay, we have more enrollment periods in which we can enroll. Can, 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 can enroll. Special enrollment period. After your initial enrollment period is over, you have a chance to sign up for Medicare during a special enrollment period. For example, if you didn't sign up for Part B or Part A, if you have to buy it, not everyone has to buy it. When you were first eligible, because you have group health, Plan coverage based on current employment, you can sign up for Part A and or Part B anytime you're still covered by the group health plan. During the eight month period that begins the month after the employment ends or the coverage ends, whichever happens first. Usually you won't have to pay a late enrollment penalty if you sign up during a special enrollment period. This period doesn't apply if you're eligible for Medicare based on ESRD or you're still in your initial enrollment period. COBRA, in my experience, blows. Um, let's see what Medicare has to say about COBRA. COBRA, Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act coverage, retiree health plans, VA coverage, and individual health insurance coverage, like coverage through the health insurance marketplace, aren't considered coverage based on current employment. Got it. There may be reasons why you should take Part B instead of or in addition Sorry. There may be reasons why you should take Part B instead of or in addition to COBRA coverage. You have eight months after your coverage. You have eight months after your coverage based on current employment and to sign up for Part B without penalty whether or not you choose COBRA. However, if you have COBRA and you're eligible for Medicare, COBRA may only pay a small portion of your medical costs. You aren't eligible for a special enrollment period to sign up for Medicare when the COBRA, co when the COBRA coverage ends. See page 88 for more information about COBRA coverage. We're not gonna do that. To avoid paying a higher premium, make sure you sign up for Medicare when you're first eligible. If you have retiree coverage, it may not pay for your health services if you don't have both Part A and Part B. It's, it's, this is, I, it's crazy how complicated this is. I wonder if the Australians need to, to deal with this. General enrollment period. If you have to pay for your Part A, but don't sign up for it, or don't sign up for Part B, for which you must pay premiums. During your initial enrollment period, and you don't qualify for a special enrollment period, you can sign up during the general enrollment period from January 1 to March 31st each year. You may have to pay higher Part A and or Part B premium for late enrollment. May have to, it's pretty much guaranteed. Um, Okie dokie, that's all of that. So what if I have other coverage like the not you know, from the marketplace, not from COBRA, but maybe retiree coverage or from current employment or, or, or whatever it was, uh, not not what it was here, what it was before. But let's say I have one of those. Should I, should I keep part B or should I drop part B? Well, 
if you or your spouse are still working and you have health coverage through that employer or union, see page 21. We're going to do that. Just you wait. See page 21 to find out how your coverage works with Medicare. You can also contact the employer or union benefits administrator for information. This includes federal or state unemployment and active duty military service. It might be to your advantage to delay Part B enrollment while you still have health coverage based on you or your spouse's current employment. Coverage based on current employment doesn't include COBRA, doesn't include retiree coverage, doesn't include VA coverage, doesn't include individual health insurance coverage like through the health insurance marketplace. If you have TRICARE, which is the, uh, the healthcare program for active duty and retired service members and their families, you generally must sign up for Part A and Part B when you're first eligible to keep your TRICARE coverage. However, if you're an active duty service member or an active duty family member, you don't have to sign up for Part B to keep your TRICARE coverage. For more information, contact your TRICARE contractor. Medicaid. Oh, uh, I'm going to read this word. If you have CHAMP VA coverage, you must sign up for Part A and Part B to keep it. Medicaid. If you have Medicaid and don't have Part B, Medicaid may help you sign up for it. Medicaid will pay first and... Oh, sorry. I misread that. Medicare will pay first and Medicaid will pay second. Medicaid may be able to help pay your Medicare out-of-pocket costs like premiums, deductibles, co-insurance, and co-payments. You uh, definitely want to check out Medicaid if you think that you might be eligible, for sure. Health Insurance Marketplace. Even if you have marketplace coverage, you should generally sign up for Medicare when you're first eligible to avoid the risk of a delay in Medicare coverage and the possibility of a Medicare late enrollment penalty. Here are some important points to consider if you have marketplace coverage. You need to end your marketplace coverage in a timely manner when you become eligible for Medicare to avoid an overlap in coverage. Once you're eligible for Part A or already have it, you won't qualify for help from the marketplace to pay your marketplace plan premiums or other medical costs. If you continue to get help paying for your marketplace plan premiums after you have Medicare, you may have to pay back some or all of the help you got when you file your federal income taxes. I will tell you right now, it ain't May. It is absolutely you will. If you become eligible for Medicare and are receiving subsidies and don't tell them, hey, I'm eligible for Medicare or didn't give them permission to check, if you don't catch that, you might end up owing a a vertigo inducing amount of money. Um, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. Okie dokie. Uh, that's all of that. HSA. HSA. You aren't eligible to make contributions to an HSA after you have Medicare. Um, I think it's a little bit before that. In fact, it is. Um, you aren't eligible to make contributions to an HSA after you have Medicare. To avoid a tax penalty, you should make your last HSA contribution the month before your Part A coverage begins. Premium free Part A coverage will go back retroactively six months from when you sign up for Part A or apply for benefits from Social Security or the Railroad Retirement Board, but no earlier than the first month you're eligible for Medicare. Depending on how you became eligible for Part A, the retroactive period may be different. See the chart below to help decide when it's best to stop your HSA contributions. I feel like I'm running over budget on time, so I'm going to just let y'all read that if y'all need to read that and skip right on over. Pause it if you need to pause it. Okie dokie. How does my other insurance work with my Medicare? Well, when you have other insurance like a group health plan, retiree health or Medicaid coverage and Medicare, there are rules for whether Medicare or your other coverage pays first. If you have retiree health coverage, like insurance from your or your spouse's former employment, Medicare pays first. If you're 65 or older, have a group health plan coverage based on your or your spouse's current employment, 
and the employer has 20 or more employees, your group health plan pays first. If you're 65 or older, have a group health plan coverage based on you or your spouse's current employment, and the employer has fewer than 20 employees, Medicare pays first. If you're under 65 and have a disability, have group health plan coverage based on you or your family member's current employment, and the employer has 100 or more employees, your group health plan plays first. If you're 65 and have a disability, have group health plan coverage based on you or your family member's current employment, and the employer has fewer than 100 employees, Medicare pays first. If you have a group health plan coverage based on you or your family member's employment or former employment, and you're eligible for Medicare because of end-stage renal disease, ESRD, your group health plan pays first for the first 30 months after you become eligible for Medicare. Medicare pays first after this 30-month period. If you have TRICARE, Medicare pays first unless you're active duty or get items or services from a military hospital or clinic or other federal healthcare provider. If you have Medicaid, Medicare pays first. We probably have already gathered this already, but you as a Medicare beneficiary are responsible for paying your premiums, your deductibles, and your co-pays for your Medicare coverage. So what do I pay? We have uh, somewhat of a roundabout way of going about giving you that answer, and you can blame the government for that, but these are their own materials, which I uh, like to use. So, how does Original Medicare work? Original Medicare is one of the Medicare, sorry, Original Medicare is one of your Medicare health coverage choices. You'll have Original Medicare unless you choose a Medicare Advantage plan or other type of Medicare health plan. Like I was telling you earlier, you, you, you once you hopped in, once you once you hop into Medicare Advantage, you lose Original Medicare. I mean, it's still there, but you're no longer in it. You are effectively on another island. You generally have to pay a portion of the cost for each service. Original Medicare covers. There's no limit to what you'll pay out of pocket in a year unless you have other coverage like Medigap, Medicaid, or employee or union coverage, or join a Medicare Advantage plan. So I would do any of those in addition to Medicare rather than just Original Medicare. If you know someone just on Original Medicare, they are in somewhat of a perilous situation because their potential liability is infinity. It's, it's almost as if they don't have insurance, but they do. Anyway. Uh, okay, Original Medicare. Can I get my health care from any doctor other healthcare provider or hospital? In most cases, yes. You can go to any Medicare enrolled doctor, other healthcare provider, hospital, or other facility that accepts Medicare patients anywhere in the US. Does it cover prescription drugs? No. With a few exceptions, Original Medicare doesn't cover most drugs. You can add a Medicare drug coverage by uh, Part D by joining a separate Medicare drug plan. The, it, 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 Original Medicare will cover prescription drugs, but they're going to be drugs that are administered by the um, the doctor. So anything that I'm going to walk out with or fill myself or administer myself, is, is it can't be Part B. But if I can get a doctor to administer something that would otherwise be Part D in the office setting, then it can get billed as Part B, which is Big brain thinking. Okie dokie. Uh, where are we? We are here. Doesn't cover prescription drugs. Don't need to choose a primary care. I don't need a referral to see a specialist. Should I get a supplemental policy? Maybe. Uh, maybe you want to buy one. Maybe. What else do I need to know about Original Medicare? You generally pay a set amount for your health care, the deductible, before Medicare begins to pay its share. Once Medicare pays its share, you pay a coinsurance or copayment for covered services and supplies. There's no yearly limit for what you pay out of pocket. 
unless you have other insurance like Medigap, Medicare, sorry, Medigap, Medigap, Medicaid, or employee retire union coverage. You usually pay a monthly premium for Part B. You generally don't need to file Medicare claims. Providers and suppliers must file your claims for the covered services and supplies you get. What do I pay? Your out-of-pocket costs in original Medicare depend on whether you have Part A and Part B or Part you can have one or you can have one of those, you can have Part A, or you can have Part B, or you can have both. Most people have both. Uh, whether your doctor or healthcare provider or supplier accepts assignment, which is a funny way of saying terms. Like my terms of, of, of the deal, like what I'm willing to pay for care. But it's between the insurer and the um, the provider. Anyway, the, the the type of healthcare you need and how often you need it, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you choose to get services or supplies Medicare doesn't cover, yeah, if, if Medicare's not gonna cover it, you're gonna, it's gonna cost some money. If so, you pay all costs unless you have other insurance that covers them. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's the reason why you get dental insurance and vision insurance and hearing insurance on the side is you still need those things, um, but you can get other insurance on the side that'll do so. Whether, whether you have other insurance that works with Medicare, whether you have full Medicaid, or get help from your state to pay um, your healthcare costs. Also, whether you have a Medicare supplement plan, Medigap, I've talked about those several times, whether you or your doctor or other healthcare providers sign a private contract. I'm not sure how much you need to be going there to be signing a private contract. I've, I've, I'd like to see that. I feel like I go there enough going, 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 to, my, uh, going to my therapist weekly. All righty. So now what? We know um, what things on original Medicare will cost, sort of. And what about Part A? Do we have to pay for Part A? Do we get it for free? Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out. Do I have to pay for Part A? Usually you don't. Uh, if you or your spouse paid Medicare taxes while working for a certain amount of time, I already told you it's 10 uh, years, 40 quarters, 40 quarters of the year, this is sometimes called premium free Part A. If you aren't eligible for premium free Part A, you may be eligible to buy it. For more information on how to pay your Part A premium, see page 24. If you buy Part A, you'll pay a premium of either $278 a month or $506 in 2023, depending on how long you or your spouse worked and paid Medicare taxes. See what I mean? It's so it's so expensive. Oh, oh my. Oh my. That's just Part A. Then you have to buy Part B. Then you have to get an advantage or a supplement. Um, anyway. If we choose in most cases if you choose to buy part a you must also have part b and pay monthly premiums for both if you choose not to buy part a you can still buy part b if you're eligible what's the late enrollment penalty for part a if you aren't eligible for premium free part a and you don't buy it when you're first eligible your monthly premium may go up 10%. You'll have to pay the higher premium for twice the number of years you could have had Part A but didn't sign up. For example, if you were eligible for Part A for two years and didn't sign up, you'll have to pay a 10% higher premium for four years. Fun, thanks Medicare. Punishment is exactly what I need. How much does Part B cost? Uh, I told you it's about 200 bucks. It's actually a bit lesser. Hallelujah. Uh, standard Part B premium for 2023 is 164.90. Most people pay that amount, which is the standard amount, uh, every month. Uh, if your modified adjusted gross income is above a certain amount, 97 in. Uh, 
If you file individually on 194, if you're married and file jointly, you get to pay an IRMA, an income-related monthly adjustment amount, which is added to your premium and can be hundreds of dollars additional per month. Um, so if you need to move some money around and reduce that taxable income, it will behoove you uh, by avoiding these uh, charges. Um, what's the Part B late enrollment penalty? So there's an enrollment penalty, same as there was on A. If you don't sign up for Part B when you're first eligible, you have to pay a pay... You have to pay a late enrollment penalty for as long as you have Part B. So instead of just being for a given number of years, double the amount that I didn't have it, it is now instead forever. And our monthly Part B premium may go up 10% for each full 12 months in the period that you could have had Part B but didn't. So if you sign up during a special enrollment period, however, you usually don't have to pay a late enrollment penalty. So, continuing, what do we pay? What do we pay for car, Part A covered services? It is reasonably complicated, but I'm going to go over it with you, and hopefully, it will not be by the end of it. Copayments, co insurance, or deductibles may apply for each service listed in the following pages. Part A, covered services, blood. If the hospital gets blood from a blood bank at no charge, you won't have to pay for it or replace it. If the hospital has to buy blood for you, you must either pay the hospital's cost for the first three units of blood you get in a calendar year, or you or someone else can donate the blood. I feel like that's so random. Like, why would anyone ever remember that? Um, Home Health Services. Part A and Part B covers home health benefits. Hospice care. Sorry to say that so happy because it's not really a happy thing. Um, to qualify for hospice care, a hospice doctor and your doctor, if you have one, must certify that you're terminally ill, meaning you have a life expectancy of six months or less. When you agree to hospice care, you're agreeing to comfort care palliative care, instead of care to cure your terminal illness. You must also sign a statement choosing hospice care instead of other Medicare covered treatments for your terminal illness and related conditions. Coverage includes all items and services needed for pain relief and symptom management, medical, nursing, and social services, drugs for pain and system, sorry, drugs for pain and symptom management, Durable medical equipment for pain relief and symptom management. Aid and homemaker services. Other covered services you need to manage your pain and other symptoms, as well as spiritual and grief counseling for you and your family. Wow, that seems like everything. Um, Medicare certified hospice care is usually given in your home or other facility where you live, like a nursing home. Other original Medicare will still pay for uh, Covered benefits for any health problems that aren't part of your terminal illness and related conditions, but hospice should cover most of your care. Medicare won't pay for room and board for your care in a facility unless the hospital medical team decides you need short-term inpatient care to manage pain and other symptoms. This care must be in a Medicare-approved facility. Nah, nah, nah. Um, I'm gonna skip over the this. The, the, we're gonna be here all day. Okay, you you pay nothing for hospice care. A copayment up to five dollars per prescription for outpatient drugs for pain and symptom management. Five percent of the Medicare approved amount for inpatient respite care. Not too bad. Inpatient hospital care. There's what it covers. There's what it costs. I told you it was complicated. I was not kidding. Um, no insurance works like this. I'm not familiar with any insurance that works like this at all, except for Medicare. 
Uh, continuing onward. And if you if you want to read any of this, you go right ahead. Okie dokie. So this is for skilled nursing. So, oops. So for skilled nursing, first 20 days that I'm there, uh, I'm not going to pay anything. I don't know anything. Um, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you're not on Medicare. So this doesn't apply to you. Whenever I'm talking about Medicare, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you're not on Medicare. You are on a private insurance plan with its own summary of benefits, its own evidence of coverage, its own system. So if you have original Medicare only or original Medicare and a drug plan, or original Medicare, a supplement, and a drug plan, you're in this camp. So first 20 days, don't owe anything. We got a co-insurance amount per day for days 21 through 100. Depending on the supplement that we have, will we'll tell us how much we owe for each of them, each of those days. If we don't have a supplement, we're gonna owe, um, It's like a hundred and some. It's like a hundred or two hundred dollars a day, and then um, after that, a hundred day, you're then responsible for everything. Okay, dokie. What does Part B cover? We kind of skipped over what A covers beyond, um, you know, inpatient hospital and and hospice and and so forth. Part B, we're also going to do the same skipping over. Feel free to pause over something uh, if, if it catches your eye. Want to look more closely. Okay, Medicare Part B covers medically necessary doctor services, outpatient care, home health services, durable medical equipment, mental health services, and other medical services. Part B also covers uh, many preventive services. We're going to go through that pages 30 through 55. Uh, Part B, covered services and general descriptions is what we're going to go over. Medicare may cover some services and tests more often than the time frames listed if needed to diagnose or treat a condition. Okie dokie. We're going to go through very quickly the list of covered services in alphabetical order. It says in bold again, um, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan or have other insurance like Medigap, Medicaid, or employer union coverage, your co-payments, co-insurance, and deductibles may be different. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, even, even as I say, this is Medicare and that's not Medicare, for the purposes of this book, the only thing that is Medicare is A and B. Part D isn't even Medicare, and Part C isn't even Medicare. When they're talking about what Medicare covers, they mean A and B only. And that's original Medicare, and that's what we're, we're referring to when, we, when we're talking about um, original Medicare, talking about A and B. Um, under original Medicare, the Part B deductible applies. You must pay all costs up to the Medicare-approved amount until you meet the yearly Part B deductible. After you meet your deductible, Medicare begins to pay its share, and you typically pay 20% of the Medicare-approved amount of the service. Uh, if the doctor or other healthcare provider accepts assignment, uh, meaning, did they accept Medicare or no? If they don't accept Medicare, you shouldn't be there. There's no yearly limit on what you pay out of pocket if you have original Medicare. I don't know how many times they're gonna tell us this, but hopefully by the end of this, this is cemented in your brain uh, that there is unlimited liability with original Medicare. There may be limits on expenses you pay through supplemental coverage you may have, like Medigap, Medicaid, or employer or union coverage. You pay nothing for most covered preventative services if you get the services from a doctor or other qualified health provider who accepts assignment, Medicare. However, for some preventive services, you may have to pay deductible coinsurance or both. These costs may also apply if you get a preventative services, service in the same visit 
as a non-preventive service. And here's some of those uh, Part B services that I was talking about. And I'm just going to continue to talk over this. If, if uh, you are eligible for financial assistance to help pay for your Medicare costs, it is well worth your... Or sorry, if, you're, if you feel that you may be eligible for financial assistance, it is well worth your time to apply for Medicaid to see if Medicaid will pay for uh, your share of costs that Medicare leaves over. If you can qualify, that is a sweet, 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 sweet position to be in that I would uh, like to be in any day of my life. Uh, we already went over the penalties we didn't go over the Part D penalty. So, uh, we, we went over the Part A penalty for not enrolling. We went over the Part B penalty for not enrolling. For Part D, it is for each month that we don't have Part D that we should have. It's 1% of the annual, or the national average, the national Part D average. So. I think last I checked, it was like 30 bucks, 30, 35, 40 bucks, something around there. So you would basically pay, as I said, 1% of that amount per month that we didn't have it and should have had it. And we then pay that indefinitely. Same thing like we did with um, Part B, which is hugely unfortunate, but that definitely should motivate you to enroll if you are neglecting to. Okie dokie. If you're not sure whether or not you should enroll, uh, ask someone like me. And this is our conclusion. We are, we are, all, we are all done here. Um, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. We got Medicare, sort of. We know who's eligible and who isn't. We know who's enrolled automatically and who's, who isn't. We know what it costs and what it covers. We know Medicare is made up of four parts. A, hospitals and the like. B, doctors and the like. C, Medicare Advantage, outsourcing Medicare to a private insurer. And D, prescription drugs. We know that Medicare covered services are covered by part A and part B. That prescription drugs are not covered by Medicare. That we need to find our that we need to find that coverage, that prescription drug coverage ourselves, through a Part D standalone prescription drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug benefits. We should also know that without enrollment in both Part A and Part B, you are not eligible to enroll in Part C Medicare Advantage or Medigap Medicare supplements. You can enroll in Part D with only Part A or only Part B. If you go without Part A, Part B, or Part D, you will owe fines. If you go without Part D or Part B, you will owe fines forever. If you would like to learn more about your coverage options, Medicare.gov is my main resource. That's where um, this document is from Medicare and you that's actually what this document is uh, which is by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services which is the overseer of Medicare and Medicaid this is this is excellent this is the best resource um, however as I gave you my resources I encourage you to reach out to someone like me instead our insurance landscape is complex and ever-changing and it's my job to stay on top of it and to distill those developments and the market participants and what they offer into discernible chunks for you to make a decision from. Thank you for listening all the way to the end of the video. I sincerely appreciate it. I will link cms.gov, medicare.gov, the Medicare and You Handbook below for those who are interested. Thank you.